and we're going to go over this EKG today. And so first thing I do with my EKGs is I look at the forest, look at the trees, and the trees are my QRSs. And so I, I look and I see, okay, we've got a pretty quick rhythm here. And if you look at the rhythm, you see some QRSs that are pretty close together. Then maybe some QRSs that are a little farther from each other. So we're seeing this kind of alternating R to R intervals. Nothing that's really a pattern. So uh, we always think there, okay, maybe this is an irregular rhythm. And so I see that my QRSs are narrow. So I've got an irregularly irregular rhythm with a narrow QRS. Okay, let's just make sure. Let's look at what the atria is doing. I don't see any consistent atrial activity, but let's just scan through all the leads. And you can see in V1, there's some atrial activity, some kind of spikiness on that T wave, some atrial activity. But if you look, there's nothing consistent. All these atrial activities are a very different morphology every time. And so, you know, it definitely has a little bit of organization to it, but we know it's not perfectly organized because of these R to R intervals being different every time. And so, with the rhythm being irregularly irregular, meaning that there's no uh, pattern to the irregularity in conjunction with the fact that these are narrow QRSs, which tells me that it's taking the Hisperkinji system for ventricular depolarization, right? Because the QRSs are, are ventricular uh, depolarization. So I know if it's narrow, it's going fast because the x-axis is time. So this is narrow QRS. I know this must be rhythm that's coming from the atria being the problem. And um, I'm not seeing any perfect flutter waves. So this would be what I would call coarse AFib. And it's coarse because we can kind of see the fibrillatory waves here. And remember, AFib and A flutter kind of exist on a spectrum at times. So sometimes you can see a fib that's, you know, it's it's on the way to kind of being a fluttery type of fibrillatory wave. So first thing we can say is that this is coarse a fib. Let's just continue to look at this uh, rhythm. And so we're seeing, you know, we'll go to V one here, and we're seeing normal beats. And let's just keep tracing here, and and then you've got this long pause. And then you've got a beat here. And then after that, you've got a short run. And you've got this funky looking beat. We've got this funky beat. And that funky beat occurs pretty quick. Remember, this interval was pretty short. And, um, and so we're like, well, maybe is this a premature ventricular contraction like what is this well something that's interesting is we know that we're in afib one of the of course afib and we know that this afib has a rapid ventricular response right this is you know the widest beat here would be like 300 150 175 but the average you know the quickest beats here are occurring maybe at 150 beats per minute. So we're ranging between really, realistically, 100 to 150 beats per minute on average. So this is definitely an AFib with a rapid ventricular response. And so I need to figure out, you know, can I explain this funky looking beat? And I believe that we can explain it pretty well. And, and so we need to determine is this is this a beat that is a PVC or 
is it a um, early conducted atrial beat? Okay. And something I want you to think about is this concept of, you know, let's just take a look at the morphology of the beat. And if you take a look at the morphology, and you look up here in V1, this funky looking beat, it's got an R, S, R prime in V1, which tells me that it's got a, the morphology of a beat that has a right bundle branch block. And so, okay, that's kind of interesting. Well, why would, might that happen? And so remember, we've got this long pause here. We've got a normal QRS, and then we've got a short pause with this funky looking beat. And so I want you to just remember that um, you know, this might actually be a beat that was conducted by the AV node rapidly. But when it conducted that beat, the right bundle branch was blocked. So if I take a look at my heart again, remember we said that if I drew the action potentials for the, say, the left bundle branch blocks action potential in blue, looks like this, right? These are the phases. This is phase four, zero, one, two, and three. This portion right here is, we'll do it in green actually. This portion right here, phase zero is depolarization. This is the repolarization. And all this time in between is when that left bundle branch is refractory, right? We cannot depolarize again if we're already depolarized. In the right bundle branch, if I drew an overlaying uh, at the same curve of its depolarization, its its membrane potentials, it would be here, it would depolarize. But the right bundle branch has just a little bit of a longer refractory period. Its phase three starts a little bit later. So its refractory period is longer. And so if I happen to get a beat that occurs right here in, in this time where say we have a, a beat that is conducted by the AV node, which means that this has to be a supra ventricular Beat, meaning that it's coming from the atria, and we know that if we're in AFib, you know, we're having signals that are just kind of going all over the atria, and then they bump into the AV node, and the AV node sends it down, and then it's going around, and it bumps into the AV node, and it sends it down again. And if we have this beat that's conducted by our AV node when we're in AFib, that occurs right in this period here, when right here the left bundle branch is no longer refractory but the right bundle branch is blocked, then that beat's gonna be conducted with the right bundle branch block morphology. And that's exactly what we see. So when we take a look at this, we see that there is this long pause in this beat beforehand. And remember we say that the QT interval, remember we, our QT, the corrected QT is the QT interval divided by the square root of the R to R interval in seconds. And so what that means is that when we have a longer R to R in seconds, so when this goes up, when the denominator of this goes up, then the, we have to correct the QTC by artificially lowering it. So what that means is that anytime after a, a longer R to R interval, the refractory period is gonna also be longer. 
or any of these conducting cells. And so what likely happened is we had long and then we had this short beat. And during that time, all these cells were going to be, you know, refractory for a longer period of time after that longer beat. So remember, when rate increases, the refractory period of cardiac cells decreases. And that's why whenever we go faster, our QT intervals get shorter. And when we go slower, our QT intervals get longer. And so the QT is just kind of, you know, the representation of being refractory. And so here we can see we have this RSR prime. And so this uh, beat, we can say, is just a aberrantly conducted beat. So we could say it, it would be a aberrantly conducted so this is, if someone asks you, is this a PVC? You say, no, it's not a PVC. And we can infer that based on the fact that we are in AFib with RVR, where we're having these rapid responses. We have this longer pause here, which we know increases the refractory period of all the cardiac cells. And then right after that, while well, we're still refractory, we have this early beat that occurs just when the right bundle branch is functionally blocked compared to the left. And then after that, we resume our normal beats. And so I scan through, you know, just for the rest of our, our evaluation of the ZKG, I scan through, I don't see any market ST changes that make me think that this person's having any ischemic problems. I don't see any pathologic Q waves to suggest any uh, remote infarcts. And my QT interval, when I eyeball it, appears to be kind of on at least just right before kind of the middle of the RR. -R. So I don't think we're our QTs prolonged. And so ultimately my interpretation of this is course AFib or just AFib with RVR, rapid ventricular response with our apparently conducted beat. That's the EKG of the week. Have a good day.